Chapter 955. Enma. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Pod D Cast. I am the best guy ever, and this is Give and Take. Uh, Loetta. I forget the welcome. rest. Welcome. There's none other than that. I am happy to be here, everybody. We've got another chapter, chapter 955, Enma. And before we get into that, let's take a look at this cover page. When we last left our heroes, the Capone gang family, the Fire Tank Pirates, they were headed to the Red Line, and they could not cross it. Now we clearly see them saying, let's pick up supplies on that island. They have seem to have circled back to Dress Rosa, which yes. they clearly are outside of. They're going to so go say hi to Rebecca they, and the so gang, yes. I guess. Well, no, because yeah. Rebe if Reverie's still going, Rebecca and the gang oh, shit. are Good at point. Reverie. So I, what they will uh, hmm. they will find there, I'm not exactly sure. Um, Let me see. Who's, it, who's here right now? Uh... Uh, well, Can you think of any characters that I are good that are still on? Yeah, you know, well, all all the Dress Rosa pirates, they were part of crews. They left. They're mm -hmm. part of the the fleet now. Uh, Rebecca yep, the and the king, we knew, King they, Riku, they there anymore. is a one legged man gladiator. Uh, Cl 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 Kronos, Kratos. Uh, what's his name? Kairos. Kairos. Yeah, maybe I'll He's see Kairos. Is he? Is he? I, I think Rebecca. I think he was with Rebecca, and I. I think Viola, well, Viola's like the actual princess of Dressrosa, and Rebecca's like, she decided to not be. So, like, I can't think of any important, I'm sure there's going to be someone, whatever. I'm sure there's going to have an adventure with characters we know and love from Dressrosa. I just, alas, cannot think of any. Uh, it, wouldn't okay. it be funny <laughs> if, like, you know, uh, uh, Beiji goes, goes mm -hmm. and then he, like, takes over Dressrosa, like, again? Lol. <laughs> Idiots. Shouldn't have left it unguarded. <laughs> Uh, I was thinking, if they go to the Coliseum, we might see some of the Coliseum guys we met, who just hang out there. There weren't well, like, many of the those announcer. guys. Yeah, yeah, okay, there's that guy with his weird, like, melon-shaped helmet. Uh, there was, remember that one really big guy, Spartan, I think, who Luffy punched? Uh, he's probably around somewhere. Maybe Beige will be best friends with that guy. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. What am I, a fucking uh, man who what knows I, One Piece? What am I, a fucking nerd? <laughs> no, sir. Okay, so we'll see what happens with these boys. I mean, maybe, like, Lola will coincidentally, conveniently, dare I say, have made it all the way to Dress Rosa. Probably not, but whatever. We'll see. Uh, okay, let's move on to the chapter, Enma. Start us off, Gib. Where are we at here? Uh, so, we come back, little flashback to um, Hiori, saying, mm -hmm. uh, I am worried about Otoko. But I'm going to. I'm not going to go meet everyone yet. I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. Forbidden to rouse emotions before the start of a war is what she said. So. I, yeah, that's some bullshit. She, it's just so that she won't. So that Oda won't have to write the scene where Hiyori reunites with everybody and they're all so happy. He's saving that for after. Or yeah. She's probably going to be working. I mean, in it, it may even literally be a thing. Like. Uh, like I you, guess. Yes. Yeah. Japanese like oh you can't see women before you start a war because then you'll you'll get a boner and that'll get in the way of riding your horse or something. I've been told I am the most Japanese man on the planet, and I can tell you <laughs> who that tells you that no such rule. Uh, I told myself I gave myself the authority to approve myself for that role, and this is bullshit. <laughs> but uh, okay, uh, understood, Huey. Fair anyway, enough. So Fair she's enough. gonna stay in undisclosed location. We don't actually know where she mm -hmm. is. Um, Ringo we, can, we can assume yeah. Ringo still. Um, Maybe she's going to be under the protection of Catman or Gyukimaru, because Zoro and Kawamatsu leave. Yeah, they leave. Just, Everybody uh, comes back to headquarters base. Well, this is the present, mm -hmm. so they were already there. And then yep, yep. Uh, Zoro and Kawamatsu come back. They give the news that Hiyori is alive, and everyone goes, mm -hmm. oh! They go cry, they Sugoi. go big tears. <laughs> uh, little Momonosuke there, getting a, getting a good flashback of his little sister who used to drop kick him in the face <laughs> yeah <laughs> flying kick and he's like he, he's into that he likes that sort of thing so he's blushing <laughs> uh, he's a masochist we, this is confirmed he loves to be abused by big tough women uh, this is gonna be a theme yeah so they said they left her in a safe location so yeah we don't know with who or where um mm -hmm. uh momonosuke is saying well, Zoro's saying to, to Momonosuke, your sister's 18 years older than you. And he's like, ooh, I'm going to get kicked in the face by an 18-year-old. Or, like, eight, someone 18 years older than me. That's, that's, that's pretty sick. How sexual of that to happen. Excellent. Excellent. Looking yeah, so, forward to that. 
you know, everyone's just sort of tr- chatting, and then we find out that Long Nose mm. Man, Tenga Yugama Hitetsu, Hitetsu, yeah, Tengu Yama, uh, is a suddenly relevant character because he Somewhat. is a bladesmith this whole time. I think we knew that already. I think he had told oh, them Luffy stole well, the sword. He was like, "That's he, my fucking sword, goddamn well, it!" Well, he's but, he's you know, uh, he's now. Um, Mm-hmm. We know that he has the sword Enma to give to, to Zoro. This is where it was with him. Yep. Yep. Yes. For 20 years, he's been waiting so they could return to, yes, to Momonosuke when he re- reappeared. So Momonosuke mm-hmm. has his mm-hmm. sword. Zoro's sword, well, Yori's sword is now in Zoro's hands. And we get a little demonstration of what the power is, what the power level, uh, you know, the thing of this sword is. Because, because you know, when we when Zoro got uh, the the oh, fuck, what's it called, the, the shoe suite, he was like, "Ooh, it's way heavy," and that didn't really make much of a difference. But it's like, well, how are they going to show that this sword's good? This is like Zoro's power up somehow. What's it going to be? Yeah. And so, so here we are. So the the, the idea is that uh, it's it's super powered, it's supercharged, and if you try to slice it, it'll suck all of the life out of your of your bones until you have a skeleton hand. Hmm. Which, uh, lo- yeah. which looks pretty yeah. grotesque in that, that one panel. It does. And Zora does a big, who? No, give me back my muscles. And it seems to work pretty well. Uh, so it looks like Kitetsu here is explaining. He, he Tetsu, right. He's just explaining, like, okay, the deal with this sword is it's, like, super duper strong. The only man who ever tamed this blade was Kozuki Oden. So, like, the former guy. And this sword is, like, so wild. It'll just keep slashing. It'll keep cutting beyond, like, what you intend to do. And it drains your... It, he says Ryuo, which is the... I believe that's just the Wano Haki. word for hockey. Yeah. So, like, we we now know that the deal with this sword is it's it does real big slashes. It's real strong, real powerful at the cost of draining hockey. This is the payoff. So, that's kind of cool. There's some interesting lore with this sword that it, I, I think is neato. I, I, I assume Hiyori was not meant to wield this, but it would be pretty funny if she swung it and then, like, her entire body turned into a skeleton in an instant. Ah. Now, you know what this reminds me of? In- including the fact that it was, like, Hiyori's and this guy was holding on to it. I get to talk very quickly about my favorite thing, Sekiro by From Software. Because the way this sword works is very, very similar to the, uh, the Mortal Blade from Sekiro. Um, the, the Red Mortal Blade, a.k.a. the Gracious Gift of Tears, which in that game, when you get to the place where you get it, there's like a shrine maiden girl, who's the divine child who's holding it. She gives it to you. She's like, hey, the thing about the sword is that anybody who uses it can't draw it because if you draw it, you die. Uh, good luck. And you are able to draw it because you have like resurrection powers. So you die by drawing the thing. You can revive. And then it's like, okay, you're, you're tough. You can revive. You can use me. And this is a similar kind of concept. In, th- in this, it sounds like anyone who tried to use it would collapse immediately so they wouldn't die. A little more high stakes in that, in that game or whatever. But same concept. And, uh, and that's, that's pretty neato. Just like that sword, this has big double slice slashes it can do. Sounds good. Sounds good. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. Yeah. I'm a little sad to see Shu Sui go. It was cool. I thought it had a nice... Actually, one, one other thing. It, it is said here, um, the, the guy goes on to say that, like, this sword has not been, like, blackened yet. It hasn't been, you know, hockeyified or whatever, which implies that there's, like, room for the sword to grow. I think yes. he says that, like, a little bit later in the chapter. I think but the, the, the implication yeah. with Shusui is that it's already mm-hmm. at max power. It's like in Dark Cloud. Well, when you get a, when mm. you get a weapon, yes. um, you need to build it up <laughs> into the next, la- the, the next tier of weapon. But you can, All we can do is relate it to video games. <laughs> yeah, you know, video game. I love, yeah. I love Dark Cloud. I played it today. Oh, how nice. And you made videos about it. You can find it on Hypocrite. No, don't find them. <laughs> okay, never mind. Um, uh, oh, shit, what was I going to say about this? Uh, I don't know. What, whatever. Well, the it's the cool, black blades, the blackenedness. What were you going to oh, say? Oh, I, I was going to say, doesn't that seem to kind of imply that the shoe suite is like a better sword? Because it's, or maybe it had well, a lower that's, level that's, cap and it reached its that's, cap. Yeah, that's what I was one talking about. This a higher with, cap. Oh, okay. That's what I'm talking about with Dark Cloud. I see, like, there, I see. You have to, you get a sword, you power it up, leveling mm-hmm. it up. And then at some point, uh, its cap is reached, like mm-hmm. its maximum attack is like 80 or whatever. <laughs> and then you build it up uh, into like a, t- like a tree, it's like a branching path of swords that you can choose. Right. Um, I remember you, doing that. You, you power it up into the next tier, and then suddenly the cap is lifted, and you can level it up more. <laughs> so uh, th- it, I, I so this, sword, like this that. Odin yeah. sword is like a better sword than the one uh, Ryuma had, mm-hmm. who maxed mm-hmm. it out. 
Makes sense to me. I mean, okay, we all know that doesn't really make sense, but we're just going to go with it because it oh, seems logical. It, it, it all makes sense. It's sword but why magic. why is that sword? Wouldn't you think that... Because well, the person, okay, who, the like person who made it... No, it's because the person who made it folded it many more times. Like the new <laughs> swords, they fold yeah. it even more. Twice as many. That That's fair. And, and by the way, we, we, we skipped over this, but it looks like um, we, we've got... Um, oh, shit. O Otama. No, not Otama. Okiku giving back... Uh, the Nidai Kitetsu, which was Luffy's sword that he stole. So that's back safe and sound here. And this guy is like, yeah, Zoro, I made your sword too. So, okay, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the I was going to say that, like, the yeah. Nidai Kitetsu, mm -hmm. there was somewhat of a, a deal was made about that, and Zoro even mentions here, like, ah, I, I thought it was a famous sword uh, because mm -hmm. it matched the cursed sword that he has, I think. Um, well, yeah, or, or it was that's said what we, we noticed. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we knew that that was the same based on the name, because uh, Nidai means like second blade of Kitetsu or Hitetsu yeah, but it's or just whatever. it is just sort of like weird that like mm -hmm. was that a plot point that was dropped and now we're just sort of like explaining uh, yeah when this sword actually isn't important don't worry about it. Well, you know, samurai sword. I think it's one of those things that it's not like super integral to the plot. But it is, like, we, we have met now the guy who made these swords. It, it's this guy. And it, it's just kind of neato. People like swords. People like, I mean, in Japan, it's a big thing, like, well, specific swordsmiths who made certain I mean, blades. The, the, the only thing I could think, like, I'm just thinking, like, mm -hmm. the reason to bring it up at all. Yeah. Like, the re like Zoro has this one cursed sword. Mm -hmm. It's called the, sure the something Kitetsu. The Sandai Kitetsu, yeah. yeah. So that's the three. And this mm -hmm. is the knee. That, that, that's correct. So, yeah, that's right. Hmm. Uh... So would the does that imply that the sun uh, sand die is like more powerful than the knee die? Uh, not necessarily. Like if there's I, a I no bigger that. number, like the thousand I, I mean, die, <laughs> it's folded that many times. You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. Times a thousand or whatever. But like, yeah, yeah. But like if it is the knee die and like it goes to like mm -hmm. three, then two is more powerful than one is more powerful. Then if, I don't think it works that way. <laughs> I'm I'm just saying like okay, like if he has this cursed blade, this he's had this one for like. How long since the very uh, beginning? Ever since um since uh the shop? Rogue Town since Rogue Town yeah, yeah. so shop. like would he ever replace this with like another's like it still needs to be cursed because the cursed sword thing is really cool um but would it be like a more powerful version of the cursed sword if there are three of these swords surely that is like one he could replace mm -hmm. after I, having I, I don't think there's probably not a big difference between them you know truth be told I'd well, imagine I, they're I roughly mean, equivalent. Yeah. yeah, but that's why I'm thinking, like, is it mm -hmm. is it a power-up potential, or is it just completely, like, a waste of time to th even think about it? Why'd they bring it up? You know, th that raises a question about this whole, like, sword thing. Okay, so I I've, we've talked about this before, about, like, kind of the weirdness in Shonen in general when it comes to, like, swordsman characters. Because, like, in One Piece, y you see, whenever Zoro has a fight, like... It would be too graphic to just, like, cut the guy in half and, like, have him bleed out and die. So Zoro needs to do, like, you know, like, sword slash, like, laser blast attacks with his, like, 100-pound hoe or whatever. He needs to do, like, t weird tornadoes that somehow... And even when he straight up just does a cool samurai dash through a guy, you see, like, a splatter of blood. But, like, you rarely even see a cut. It's just, like, they're unconscious now somehow. So, like, how do you power... Like, th this example right here. We're shown, like, how do we know that the Enma is really, really strong? Because Zoro seemingly, like, did, like, a gentle cut on a tree, but that cut got magnified by the sword, and it chopped off an entire side of a cliff. Like, oh, okay, that's cool. Actually, in, in Toriko, th this is what I talked about before, a couple episodes back or whatever, this guy... Uh, uh, Komatsu or whatever, he got, like, a special knife made, and he just, like, dropped it or swung it once, and it, like, shot out a blade that, like, cut a fucking island in half or something. So, like, this is how you show, like, how good a sword is. But practically speaking, what does that mean exactly? Like, this is the, this is the thing that I always talk about with these guys. How do you show that Zoro has really powered up with this sword in, like, an actual fight where we feel stakes? I mean, you can't. There's, there's no. like... You have to it's present the, a substance it's, it's, that couldn't have been cut, and it's now the we same can cut with, it. It's the same with with guns, but to a lesser degree, because with it, a gun, that, that's right. That's a gun right. to a human being is fatal mm -hmm. if it shoots a certain area. Yeah. Um, and if a gun is more powerful, it can't mm -hmm. like you can have literally more powerful guns, but it doesn't take much of it. Like it, your tiny little pea shooter, tiny mm -hmm. little pistol the size of a tennis ball, could kill a man if you shoot in the right in the right place. It's just it's True. a really fast piece of metal. Like, you it, you don't need a bigger bullet or a faster bullet to kill them mm -hmm. even better. So, like, the power scaling is all, like, you can't mm -hmm. really power scale mm -hmm. up with, with gun shonen things. 
Not necessarily. Yep. So like it, guns you, you end up feeling that. completely, you know, useless. That's why nobody uses guns in Shonen, basically. Now, yeah. luckily, we do have hockey now, which does add some dimension. Like, now you can just put, like, hockey into a, a, a bullet, probably, and shoot it. So that'll, like, yeah, you know, yeah. and that way that powers up your bullets now. But, but, like, um, but yeah, but with the swords, it's the same sort of thing. But yeah, uh, with swords, is. there's more of, like, a technique aspect. Like, if you're, mm-hmm. if you're steady on your feet and you've got a good eye and a good sensor and, you know, a good stance and a, sl- a strong slash. But a lot of the time that sort of fades away into like mm-hmm. well it's it's you know it's taken for granted or just assumed that all the characters who are a super high level know all the basics know all the mastery mm-hmm. techniques it's all just about how hard they can hit at this point that's that's exactly right and then and yeah it, since, it does become yeah. a bit like i can cut it a just, mountain it, well i can cut two mountains that's that's exactly that's all they've had zoro okay the, the everyone knows the pinnacle of this development for zoro was when he fought mr one as we've said many times and he learned how to cut steel that it will never get better than that moment that was the big zoro really progresses as a swordsman um what, then if, there was, what like, if he learns Skypea. to cut water what if he learns to do a full moses well, see, there was talk. Remember when uh, Zoro learned that Kinemon has weird fire-cutting powers with his swordsmanship? Wano's, like, almost over, and he really has not done anything with that. There's been no... I mean, okay, Act 2 is concluding. Presumably, Act 3 will be the finale. Oh, you know, it, sure, it sure is looking that way. They did yeah. set fire to a huge hill, and he didn't cut any of that fire. He didn't cut any of that fire. That's true. That's true. Um, I, well, I, I don't know. I, I don't feel like Zoro... I mean, does, does Odo want to spend the time to, like, have Zoro learn all these miscellaneous sword weird cutting techniques? I, I, I don't know. Maybe hockey is just the catch-all solution to all that shit. I don't know what's intended by that. But, like, uh, yeah, I mean, Zoro's learned basically all the tangible skills. He learned how to cut steel. He learned how to, in Skypiea, he learned how to, like, throw attacks and do projectile sword attacks. That's really all you got. When it comes to Zoro. So, but, but, okay, the one thing that's changed is now hockey is a bigger deal. And specifically, there, there is actually one obstacle. There, there's a couple things. Remember when Zoro was unable to fucking, uh, to cut Kuma during, um, uh, Thriller Bark? And presumably, that's because he is made of Wapole metal. So, it, like, frankly, most people who read One Piece don't know what Wapole metal is. And they don't, yeah, they wouldn't not understand a, the a differences major, there. like, focus in the story yet. Right. It, it, I mean, it, it's, it was it's relevant been building up in the, times, in the background, but... but like, it's not been explicitly stated. Like, this is Wapol metal, mm-hmm. and this is the, it's all been like a secret. It's been yeah. M- most people Under are, are not thinking about that. It was used on. Uh, we know it was used for Kuma, and it was used during the the Great War with Whitebeard. They made those big shields that surrounded the plaza or whatever that Whitebeard's even his shockwaves couldn't go through. It was like implied that that was Wapol metal and stuff, but. I mean, on, on this subject, but there, forget Wapple Mile. There is one thing that has been hinted is, like, cannot be cut, and that is Kaido. It's been said this sword was the one thing able to give Kaido a scar. So, but the weird thing is, is Zoro going to be the one to fucking beat Kaido? I mean, uh, he, maybe he'll, like, cut him open and Luffy can reach in and fucking rip his heart out. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, he goes uh, inside, he just <laughs> jumps inside the wound and, like, gear threes his whole body. Oh my god! <laughs> Blows him up from the inside, like that one. Well, there's that one filler arc where he goes inside, or like a giant who has a a mini devil fruit goes inside Luffy and then blows up. But Luffy's made of rubber, so he could survive, I guess. Yeah, Kaido, Kaido is not made of rubber. Kaido so is gonna just go, explode. I mean, uh, that, that's I, I I suspect that is the end game for this this particular power up with Zoro. I mean, it's been specifically said this sword has been described as the one thing that ever cut Kaido. So yeah, if it doesn't, I mean, like, that's got to be the payoff to this. Like, uh, if, if this anything, thing. this will be mm-hmm. the first, like, final boss of an arc that mm-hmm. is defeated by not just Luffy, but Luffy plus... Well, at, technically, at Zoro's and, and Moria were, like, a team effort. Oh, that, um, I, I suppose that's true, yeah. But I, I do think this will be a, a group effort as well. I, I definitely I mean, de- think... definitely like, a group effort. I was imagining yeah, from yeah. the beginning, because of the amount of characters here, that all probably want Kaido dead. Very true. And at a bare minimum, Zoro has now obtained a technique that will allow him to, to hurt Kaido. And what's Luffy been doing this whole time? He's been training a technique to specifically hurt Kaido. So that's two characters who, like, have new weapons they could use to hurt Kaido. So I think both, at a minimum, those two guys will both do yeah. something to actually hurt Kaido, for sure. And I'm looking forward to it. 
could not be more excited. Ooh, what if they do like sick, cool, dual attacks? And they call it like a sick like name of the attack that's both of them? Like Gomu Gomu no sword? Or something <laughs> sick like that? <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> Gomu Gomu no slash. <laughs> Gomu Gomu Onigiri attack. Oh, it's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to I, it I want much. Zoro to go full, like... Like, I... I you know, there's there's definitely mm. like, oh, it's cool to cut a mountain, but like, I like the the prolonged Zoro battles where he has to, mm. like, he gets really. Those are cut so up. much better. They're so he, much better. He gets than really like... fucked up and like mm. needs to resort to like really un you know see, techniques that we don't see enough, like the three hit. Put thing. the bandana on Zoro. Put on the bandana. Do cool attacks. Put on the and... bandana over your your eye that's that's open, so you you're not even looking. Ooh, what if instead of his bandana, he puts it on and it's just like a big like samurai helmet instead, and it's like hockey or something? Ooh, that'd be sick. Although, you know, I, I'll I'll just say, we've been saying a million for a million years, Zoro needs his cool samurai battle. Kaido is not really as like. Uh, look, I, I think a Zoro versus Kaido will be dope, and I definitely think it's gonna happen. But I still really crave. A Zoro versus Swordsman, like, epic one-on-one -on -one Swordman duel, you know? I think um, the battle... I think he'll do both? I think he may have both. Um, I hope so. I, I hope think, so. what's his face? The uh, the leader of the Yakuza who stopped him yeah, earlier. Yeah, that I think guy. that I think that might be the guy. I think he's the strongest candidate right now, I think. Although, I mean, we there's lots of Kaido's forces, the numbers who just showed up. Maybe one of them will be, like, a cool sword guy. I, I, I don't know. But Zoro did already have, like, a little clash with that guy. So that, that does feel he like seems, it's built he up. He seems like a sort of, vi uh, like, a, a villain who mm -hmm. would have a lot of, like, emotional, like, uh, cool stuff. Like, he... Yeah. I yeah. was, like, I don't know whether he's related to Grandpa Hyogoro, but, like, mm -hmm. possibly, mm -hmm. like, there's gonna be, like, this is gonna be an emotional battle, and I feel like... Ooh, that's true. Having Zoro fight a, a number would be kind of lame. And he is cares? definitely the best candidate. I mean, we're definitely going to get some cool backstory. I mean, you know how what Oda likes to do, people. He gives us the flashback during the epic final clash. We get all kinds of dope things we've been wanting to know for a million years. Oh, this is just very exciting. It's very exciting. And, uh, I, you know, I didn't do it justice, but I will just say this. The fact that the sword Enma, like, drains Zoro's physical arm, and then he, like, sucks it back. It is re reminiscent to when he did the cool, like, sword drop moment in uh you know in, in rogue town all those years ago and uh feels like he's he's powering up his strength is strong enough to overcome this looks really dope he's also silly and cool at the same time oh it's just great it's very yeah. very cool all this is great very excited um so there you go zoro power up we'll, we'll see what happens with that so i guess so, let's go on to the next shit i think a day passed or something uh, they're still there. They're still planning and preparationing. Three days till the raid. Yep. Yep. Uh, Robin says that uh, I was doing things, guys, off screen. Uh, <laughs> my my skills as a as a sleuth are are useful. I've my found out that they, uh, they they have <laughs> thirty thousand enemies, twenty thousand beast pirates, and ten thousand samurai boys. Yep. Yep. So uh, that's that's the big numbers. Nothing really much That's to say about that because we don't know how many of those thousands are easily defeatable by one of like super powered guy on our side. It's got to be most of them, right? It's got to be. Remember that one time Luffy passed out fifty thousand people at once? I remember that. Maybe do that again, Luffy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe do that again. Oda, what were you thinking? That number was way too fucking big. That was a mistake. <laughs> okay, but whatever. These guys, they, first of all, they're crew members of a Yonko, and they're the Wano Samurai boys. So, okay, hopefully these guys yeah, yeah. can handle a little bit of hockey in their in their. Brain. All right. So we get a cut of Frankie building the ships. He's yelling oh, and, at all and, the and our troops are four thousand. That's important too. We yeah. have four thousand troops to their thirty thousand. But okay, okay, sorry. Yeah. So, uh, Frankie's yelling like we need the ships to be sturdy. Uh, so that they can carry 10,000 people just to be safe. I think this is uh, a hint that... Um, it's a super hint, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a pretty big... Like, there are going to be people on uh, the island that are going to need to escape. Probably the kid pirates, among others. The kid pirates, the law pirates are unaccounted for. They're going to well, show up. the law pirates are sort of free at the moment. They're, they're thinking of doing maybe saving law. Or, 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 True, the law's free right now, so... yeah. I mean, we can talk about him in a moment, right? Uh, at, right. at the end, because uh, I have, I have, I have a thought. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, but yeah, the prison of mind. I mean, this be... is just clearly implying that yeah, we we are not. It, the numbers are gonna rise. A guaranteed. Th that's how One Piece works. You know, yes. there's gonna be more people. So you know, this might be the opposite. Whereas they plan to go in with like low numbers right now, and I always say the plans always fall apart. But what if it just goes way better than expected, and they get way more people? Wouldn't well, that I, be a change of pace? I, I mean, they do say in this chapter, four hundred, uh, two hundred extra people arrive. I think that mm -hmm. might be the cap. Yep. yep. Um. D uh, did you notice four thousand two hundred four twenty times done, ten? Oda. Four Very twenty times done. ten. That's a lot of ten weed. Ten times the weed. Smoke them out, boys. That's the way. <laughs> Uh, there are also the samurai trapped in the middle of the 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 you know capital city. Oh yeah, they're coming. They're coming. There's so that no that might be it. another thousand or two thousand. I don't fucking know how big that place is, but like uh, <laughs> some sort of a number. But it, I don't mm -hmm. think it would get higher than five thousand. And to uh, to have the boats carry ten thousand, um, it implies I mean, the that there's 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 like potential for like people to come out of Onigashima. I don't think that people are going to get on the boats of that many. I think it's for, like, escaping. Mm, possibly. I think I think just the fact that... Fra the fact that Frankie now said the, the number 10,000, that's a Chekhov's gun right there. I think there are definitely going to be, like, 10,000 or more people on these boats now. Because that's what, like... It, it, like, he wouldn't have even brought it up if it wasn't going to be something that gets revisited shortly. Uh, so e either something will happen with that where they, like, more people are on the boats to leave. I don't think that's really going to matter. I think this is a everybody commits to the battle in Onigashima and then we leave nothing on the field. You know, we we put every bit of our heart and soul into this raid. That's what I expect. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. So Luffy's still fighting or training, uh, doing the, the punch thing. Zoro is uh, in the bamboo, slicing with his new sword. Momonosuke's mm -hmm. there, training. Um, we get a little drop that, uh, that Zoro uh, knows about the Sunachi thing. Yep, yep. Uh, because the geezers in his village used to say it back in the day, so it's just something he picked up. Very heavily implying. So this is just that clearly saying that clearly like, Zoro's that village is descended from Wano in from some Wano, way or something. From Wano, yes. And, uh, yeah, no doubt. What do they say? That's later? pretty cool. Yeah, so two days until the raid, there's just people getting ready, um, then everybody uh, comes together, Luffy gets brought over, uh, all of the Yakuza guys bring the 200 extra people, and then they got 4,200. Yep, there they are. Um, they got reports that uh, all the samurai trapped in the uh, the flower capital, they just can't get them out, there's too many guards or something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they just leave them behind, I guess. And uh, they meet at the promised port. They're all getting ready to go, hyping them up. And uh, I think uh, now Luffy is saying that the the Straw Hats will go on their sh on the Sunny as well. Yes. Yep. Looks that way. And uh, now there's this little bit where the the regular people of Wano are just sort of whispering to each other that they're hearing that there's something going on. There's going to be a, mm -hmm. a rebellion, and they're all sort of like, ooh. You know the red scabbards and 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 the and the, that paper wasn't a, a prank and all that and I'm wondering how they they figured this out or who spread the rumor. Uh, I but... mean, this has got to be one of those things where like e like even um, Odin himself or not Odin, sorry, uh, Orochi, like he's suspicious of all these things going on and like he'd probably heard about what's happening. So like uh, the the people of Wano, like by knowing Wano so well, knowing excuse me all the port names and whatnot. Like, that, that was the reason that they were able to, like, decipher the meaning on the paper, because uh, they know oh, everything. Maybe. So, like, they, these people, of course, would know most of those things. Orochi and his gang would also probably be able to decipher things. Of course, Yasui's gambit was to try to convince them that, it, you know, he's just it trying to just fuck with prank, them. But... but, I mean, so yeah. I think that, like, they're a little doubtful, but these people are also not fully convinced. To them, it's like a rumor as well, but it's given them... Yeah, a little it's, bit it's of hope. giving them a little bit of hope, but uh, the mm -hmm. guy in the factory is like, "There's no fucking way, we're gonna yeah, die. Yeah. I'm gonna die right now." And he falls oh. over. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> oh, and they say yeah, in a close. It, it's it's sad to think that yeah, Wano is an isolationist country. It's all closed off, so there's no one who even would or could come to help. No one can stand up against Kaido. They're that too feel powerful. when no friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but uh, we but. got a cool image here of seven of the red scabbards minus um the guy they couldn't find i forget his name 
and yep. Nekomamushi, who would be mm-hmm. somewhere bringing the Whitebeard pirates potentially during the battle. They I, said I they think... wouldn't come, but I think they're gonna come. This is my this is my suspicion. I think they're gonna be like, "Hey guys, it's me, Whitebeard. I'm back, and I'm gonna I'm join. Back, I'm bitch. gonna join Big Mom and Kaido as well." Ooh, ooh! If I was Gecko Moria and I wasn't dead. Uh, I would go to the grave of Whitebeard and dig him up and make him a cool zombie for me. That's what I would do. Oh, shit. You know? Now, that would be be fucked up. (laughs) It would be fucked up. You know, Uh, if if Blackbeard gets gets a hold of Moria's fruit, he could literally do that. Oh, my God. That would be a huge asset to Blackbeard. That's a good-ass fucking fruit. And he just, like, killed Gecko Moria, so definitely possible that he just fucking did that shit. Uh, but, uh, regard- we'll see what happens with that. And this group shot is cool, and I think in the back I see Otama and other people waving goodbye. I'm not sure who all those people are, I think and, like, that's... why they're not going with this group. Well, this is, like, the, the, the cool guys. This is the, this is the movie, like, the, what is that movie? True. Um, Seven Samurai. Oh yeah, Seven Plus Two. Seven Plus Two, yes. Pretty cool, pretty cool. <laughs> Except one of them is a ninja. And one's a ninja, one's a little baby boy. And one's a dog. By, by the way, uh, so, I mean, the whole, so, like, um, moment, there was a, there's a, there's a big, another Chekhov's gun here. That's the, what's it called? The Ame no Tsuka, blah, 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 whatever. It's like the sword that uh, Kozuki Odin used that was going to be for Momonosuke. We can see on Momonosuke's back that, like, this sword is not that sword. We can tell by the hilt and other things. So he's just got, like, a normal sword or whatever. Like, is that sword, like, relevant? I mean, what are we doing with that sword? Is it just not going to play a part in the battle? And is it just going to be something that afterward... Are you, are you absolutely sure that sword isn't there? I'm, I'm looking at... I'm look, I'm judging basically based purely on uh, Momonosuke's sheath. And, okay, first, actually, one of those swords was black, had a black scabbard. One of them had a white scabbard. And... You know what? Based on the colors and stuff I was trying to tell, I'm not 100% sure that Momonosuke does not have that sword. I'll probably be able to tell in, like, a couple of chapters if we confirm that. I think that he does not, though. I mean, based on everything about him saying he wasn't ready for it, I think if he was going to take it, it seemed like they would give, like, a little bit of a scene to that. So I still think that's the most likely thing. But maybe he'll pull it out at, like, a crucial moment later. That could be something that happens. Maybe. Um, I mean, I doubt I he'd be able to use it at all, so it would be kind of, like, for no reason. I'm kind of wondering what... I mean, I'm still wondering what Momonosuke's role in this whole war is actually going to be. He might just be, it's, like, a figurehead, but that seems I, a little anticlimactic, I you think know? his... Well, his role in the war, because he's a child, is not really to do... To do... Well, maybe to kill Orochi, but, like... I, it's more like he's the mm-hmm. future, so, like, he's... Yeah. The future ruler of Wano. He needs Should to he really see, he needs to see like cool people doing cool things, so that you'd be like, I yeah. want to be cool like that when I'm the leader. Sure, sure. And you know, he's, you know, young he, and shit. They're treating him like a man, letting him go along. Because he obviously, I mean, you know, he's to. trying to get revenge. It's understandable. Uh, yeah, I, I, th- I think, I mean, because because of Oro- the way Orochi has been painted as not particularly strong or intimidating, I suspect that he's the perfect target. For someone who's also not very strong or intimidating, Momonosuke to kill in a cool, or finish off in some cool, badass way that makes him feel like he's doing justice, getting revenge for his dad, saving Wano. This is my suspicion. I think that's what he's going to do. But, I don't know. Could be totally wrong. We'll see. Yeah, so they travel across the desert, presumably, uh, you know, in a small group, I guess, all the other samurai and and soldiers are making their Mm -hmm. way separately to the the port and they're all gonna yep. meet there and, and do the thing and we get a little cutaway to uh gravestones Indeed. so yasuye otoko uh, says goodbye to dad mm-hmm. and then some furries are there as well <sighs> carrot doesn't give a fuck <laughs> well she's she's made yeah. her peace with pedro uh... no she's happy she's like hey hey die no she's smiling because she knows he's not dead guys she knows he's not yeah, dead yeah, he's that, coming back that actually isn't like a like a memory that's him he's li- he's literally right there <laughs> wait you mean like on the left yeah on the left he's he's alive that's not that's that other guy who looks just like him. oh that's uh Deb- musketeer man Dep- depro uh yeah <laughs> unrelated uh other man uh, all right, Pedro. In, uh, enough. Can we can we be past this whole Pedro thing? And I'm just saying, guys. Uh, Carrot, 
Does it, do you guys, is there people out there who really still think Carrot's joining the crew after all this lack of doing anything, this whole arc? Come on, come on. It's time to, it's time to let it go. It's time to let it go. She's, she's a one panel okay, character. What, what, what uh, do you, can you think of a thing she's done in Wano? Cause I cannot. Literally nothing. Literally nothing. Been in group shots with the Minx, I believe is the only thing. I don't think she's had one line in all of Wano. No, she's had a line. Oh, do uh, a line of cocaine, if that's true or not what, what true. Group I am a drug she addict. was she was she was she was with uh, what, which group? She she did go, she she did go to Whole Cake, so she came with yeah. Luffy and the others. Yeah. Okay, true. But and I mean, so, that's the last so time Luffy she did Luffy anything, Luffy you know. um, washed up on the beach. She was alone, and then it it turns out that everyone else fell somewhere, and then Carrot was with everyone. And since then, I guess she's been with mm-hmm. Inuarashi and stuff. Yeah, I think so. I think that's correct. Or with the other minks or whatever. Yeah. Well. Nah. I mean, I'm sure she'll participate in the battle as, like, it seems like everyone's going to. So that'll be fun. That'll be cool. But, you know, doesn't seem like it's uh I think Depro is going to be a bet. Be- is going to join the crew. <laughs> God, I hope so. He, he looks like he's ready. But by the way, was I wrong? Is the fire festival on the night of a full moon, or am I am I wrong about that? It sure is convenient that all these big battles, if that's I could be wrong, happen on a full moon, so the minks can activate their super duper powers. Um, I could again, I could be totally wrong about that, but that wouldn't would that be, be convenient? That would if be so. convenient. I would like to see um, Inuarashi's Zulong form. Ooh, that'd be cool. I want to see all their Zulong forms. Wouldn't that be fun? That, well, I mean, whatever. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, okay, so here we've got uh, Kitetsu here, or uh, Hitetsu, talking to Zoro, just being like, oh, are you getting used to Enma? That's cool. And it's because uh, the, the one sword you use, the Sandai Kitetsu, is my creation. I'm a swordsmith guy. Uh, they can only be wielded by the strong. No weak boys can use it. But the other sword you're using, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the new one you've got, the Wado Ichimonji and Enma were made by the same dude, Shimotsuki Kozaburo. Who and apparently those swords left 50 years ago. So just like the Shusui, they were missing and they needed to get them. So like, okay, so over 50 years ago, and Zoro was talking about how the geezers in his village, like they, uh, you know, like they were used the ones using the word Sunachi. So maybe it's a thing where, uh, uh, by the way, and here's where he says that uh, Enma has yet to become a black blade, so it can rise in rank. So yeah, it can it can get powered up. That'll that'll be cool. Um, Zoro seems like he's inheriting the will. Of Kozuki Odin, so that's that's cool. Um, so are we? Are we to? It seems like we're we're supposed to take from this that the Wadoichi Monji was probably taken by whoever left Wano to form the village that Zoro is from. I'm guessing, and maybe it was like the guy who ran that dojo, or maybe like his dad I, or something. Well, only, and maybe well, that dad was Shimotsuki Kozaburo. I mean, in fact, I'm gonna I, fucking Google I, that. I feel like it's definitely that guy because 50 years ago. I mean, remember, mm-hmm. there was, like, a time skip of two years, and Zoro's, like, how old? Like, 20-something? He was yeah. a kid when that guy trained him, so, like, it would he would uh, it would have been 30 years ago, 30-something mm-hmm. years ago, mm-hmm. that they left. And uh, that's enough time to get settled in a village and to be, yeah. like, a like a middle-aged man. I think the Wait guy a <laughs> who, who trained Zoro is, is, the, is probably the guy who made those swords. Well, this guy, okay, now our, our boy here, Hitetsu, says that uh, it left, this left the uh, country over 50 years ago. Oh my god, guys, I just did a fact check. This guy, uh, his name was uh, Koshiro, he was the teacher, and he is 51 years old. He made this blade at the <laughs> age of zero, and then he left the country with the blade. It's the only explanation. Okay, maybe uh, it was his dad then. It might have been his dad, or like his crowd, who knows. And let me let me just double check. Okay, he said well, the name was 51... Shimotsuki Kozaburo <laughs> Koshiro. So okay, different names. Got it. Could be his dad. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. All right. Oh, well, there you, you know, go. you know, definitely that, connection. That would make sense because he like it was his father's blade. His father died and and whatever, and he had this blade, and he was gonna give it to his daughter, but her daughter died, fell down the stairs. Sure did. Still don't sure. know what that's Allegedly. about. Allegedly, what a dunce. And so he gave uh, it now, to Zoro. Now, if she stayed in the kitchen, this never would have been a problem. There's no stairs in the kitchen, you you silly young lady. Uh, by the way, I, I don't. This is I'm, again. I'm reading bold. I don't know if this is true or not. So Shimotsuki Kozaburo. Okay, and we only know that the 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 teacher's name is Koshiro. So I'm, that Ko I'm noticing is the same. If I could read Japanese, 
I mean, actually, if I could just see the kanji, maybe it'd like be the same. Maybe that guy's name is Shimotsuki Koshiro. So it's like, there's like a name theme going on there between the dad and the son or something. Maybe. I don't know. We don't maybe, know his last name. Maybe he changed so. his name when he left to be like, uh, I'm not He's from... too young, goddammit. He would have been one. <laughs> no, 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 not him. His father. Like, his father oh, yeah, yeah. Well, well that, that's his first name. So, like, the last name of uh, Shimotsuki... Wait, oh, wait, shit. And I forgot. The name of the village is Shimotsuki Village. That's where they're fucking from. Lol. So, okay. It, the, the, the evidence is piling right. up. Well, right. I, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely yeah. settled by that blacksmith guy. Maybe it was his dad. Maybe it was grandpa. But this uh, definitely this is, confirmed. This is cool because um, it means mm -hmm. that Zoro's white sword that he's been using, the Wado Ichimonji, yep. uh, the reason it hasn't broken and it's really reliable, mm -hmm. uh, is because it was made by a good, powerful uh, sword man. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, let me see. Zoro's swords. When did he break his two? So oh, fighting, fighting Mihawk. That's right. That's when he broke like his like normal swords. Yeah. Um. Because it, and... I mean, there's there's two ways to think about this. One is mm -hmm. that um, the most precious thing, uh, you can't get rid of it. Like his that sword is like, reminds yeah. him of, like it's a, it's a keepsake. More he so can than never just get rid of that. One, he can never sure. get rid of that one. Mm -hmm. um, and like on the one hand, it could be like convenient that it this just happens to be also a really really good blade made by mm -hmm. a really really good bladesmith. On the other hand, who cares? It's cool. So I, I mean, don't know. Yeah, <laughs> very true. Um, all right, let me see. So, uh, oh, oh, right, okay, so next thing. Uh, uh, we've got Luffy uh, practicing his hockey punch. Now, before, he was doing things in gear fourth, and they said, like, oh, you're using too much brute force. But now, we've got Luffy in base form, using, you know, hockey arm or whatever, with his, whatever it's called. And we can see, clearly, he's doing a little punch. This does not just brute force this tree. We see the big blast happening on the other side, and he's like, she, 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 with his cute little laugh. Just you wait, Kaido. So it just seems unequivocally, Luffy has more or less in the like two weeks or whatever he's had, he has had time to basically master this technique. I'm sure he didn't like perfectly master it, but uh, he's had he, way he, more he time to work on now. this than he did with the hockey I mean, that he Ka learned in like one day yeah. against uh, Katakuri. Kaido is yeah. going to be more resilient than a tree, but yes, this is very good progress. Well, of course, of course. Everything's looking good. His training has come along nicely. And it, it, we really should say, he learned that... Um, that uh, observation hockey advancement stuff against Katakuri over like literally like an eight hour period like of that fight or maybe it was a little bit longer than that he has had now I believe weeks to practice with this so that is a good amount of time to learn some shit about hockey so feeling good Luffy's gonna do some cool stuff powering up everyone's getting stronger yeah I like it all right so we get this last little bit um mm -hmm. Orochi's on on the snail he, he's he's getting a report that Udon, the prison, is fine, and then there was yep. no problems whatsoever. So it's like, hmm, so that was a false report. Mm -hmm, so he mm -hmm. has been given information that said Udon was fucked. And I assume uh, the, 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 the people, the, the animal mm -hmm. half-breed people uh, at the prison right. are still, like, on the good guy side. They're, they're tamed, as it were. He does not seem to be, he seems to have, <clears throat> yeah, he seems to not know that the jail is fucked and that our boys are running it. So he doesn't seem to suspect that. That seems to be true. Yes, but he did get a report saying it was, and uh, mm -hmm. like, how mm -hmm. dare he say something, do something so untrustworthy. Oh, well, as long as I can suppress it, it will be okay. So he, uh, Rochi is saying here that he knows that the port has changed from Port Habu to Port Tokage. Yes. Which means... So he is looking at the paper, and he knows what Yasue changed. I don't think it's the paper. I think it's a report. Okay, maybe. Maybe. It, it might be the paper, but somebody told him. And I think the fact that Law's face is there is that Law betrayed everyone. I mean, l yeah, let's not forget. Like, somebody let Law go, and... Uh, I, okay, this is the implication... I mean, are you really entertaining for even a second that Law actually betrayed them? It's not going to happen. There's zero chance. I don't because know. Because this is One Piece. I don't it know. Didn't ha I'm telling you. Law, okay, this is the thing. Law is too popular a character for Oda to write him having betrayed Luffy and the gang. Unless, unless it's for some higher purpose, like he betrayed them so they would act this way, all in service of the greater victory, where like everyone's that's, saved. That's what I'm about to think. Is like, he, okay, okay. Law has his own plan. Now, I'm not and thinking that using... yet. I'm about to have that thought. Just give me a minute, and I will get back to you <laughs> with this thought. Okay. <laughs> okay. But like, my thought is uh -huh. that Law is um, through 
some strange plan or some deal has it in his head that he, mm -hmm. like, this plan to just go in is not going to work, and in order to defeat Kaido, he needs to do, he needs to use these guys as bait to, like, make everyone think that they've quashed the rebellion, and then he sneaks in and does something. Either that, or... Possibly. Either that, or he wants to run away, and he wants to fuck him. I, I don't know why he would, like, man malevolently do anything. But I do think that exactly. he's betrayed them right here. I just don't know so why. So you actually think he... Oh, do you think he's truly betrayed them? Or that it's, like, he ultimately he's doing things for the good of everyone, he's, he, but he's... Well, there was that one bit in the chapters preceding where Hawkins mm -hmm. was like, you know, the, 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 the four emperors mm -hmm. are on another level. Kaido is so unbeatable. There's no way any of us can do anything about them. Right. And, and, like, your alliance... With Straw Hat's gone pretty good so far, but, you know, mm -hmm. uh, my alliance got torn to shreds because Kaido was too powerful. You know, do True. you really trust True. me? Like, I feel like Law, at, on a base level, would not, like, immediately throw Luffy under the bus, but he also wouldn't not think about this. So maybe mm, he's uh, making a poor sure. judgment call, like, maybe the only way to defeat Kaido is through X, and to do that I need, you know, Orochi on my side. I need Orochi to help me kill Kaido, or something. I, you know, I, I would want that to be the case. I want to think that our characters here, including Law, who's a bit of a deeper thinker, a bit of a smarter guy, is willing to actually weigh the likelihood. Because, I mean, look at the facts. Right now, 4,200 troops are marching. Like, Law is nowhere to be found, and frankly, our characters don't even seem that worried about, like, where Law is. As far as they know, he's probably been captured. Um, but I guess, like, they, he said he was gonna go take care of other stuff or whatever, so they're, he said he'd meet them at the, at the battle or whatever. But, like, they're, they're fine to just, like, let that happen or whatever. But I just, my genre savviness get, tells me that there is, like, literally, I may, okay, maybe, like, a 99% chance, bordering on 100, that law that this panel is just put here as a misdirect and that law uh, is in right. fact just a good guy I on think, our side i think mm -hmm. it's not a misdirect i mm -hmm. think what is going to happen is that this is going to be like law being not as cool as luffy and luffy i could imagine the the scenario where if we we find mm -hmm. out that law betrayed the guys it's like you don't get it I do hope you that happens you, you don't get it, do you? In order to be the pirate king, you know, you can't have alliances or whatever, some sort of speech. Mm. And Luffy says, shut up, you're my friend. Like, lol. Like, some some stupid thing. And then he beats <laughs> him. Like, the the whole thing with Law being... Like, because, like, this alliance can't last the entire rest of the thing. I disagree. Th they have disagree. to be... They have to eventually decide to be rivals for the, the throne. of You know, the pirate king thing. Luffy would Luffy would be stubborn. Because he thinks Law is cool and is like, mm -hmm. you know, he's his best, he's his biggest fan. He's like, you know, he wears his hat all the time. He bought his hat at the the store. Rel relatable, yeah. <laughs> um, but Luffy's not like. Luffy wants to be king. I mean, he wants to be. Yeah. Although, but that just means the most free. So, like, does he really care about like a title or a crown? I, I think I, I think it's gonna sure. be a complex um, mm -hmm. reason, but I think it is gonna be Law has made this judgment call, and it's going to he's he's uh, he's not gonna become a villain, but he is going mm. to have caused a lot of problems, and then Luffy's you know gonna be like, well, f you know, whatever, I don't give a shit, you're cool. You, you know, know, I'll tell gonna, you. Again. He, Luffy's gonna win everything, and Law's gonna mm -hmm. be like, "Oh my god, I didn't think it was possible, but you still pulled through, and you killed Kaido, and you made him eat Big Mom, and mm -hmm. Big Mom's dead as well. It's impossible. I, I like, I couldn't calculate for this. I, I, you know, I thought, and, and then Luffy's gonna yeah. tap him on the shoulder and say, "Ha ha, die," or something. You know, hmm. that's that's my I feel thought. You. you know, I, I, at the start of this, I said ninety-nine to one hundred percent certainty. Uh, uh, first of all, I want what you're saying to happen. At, at some point, Law does need to accept, because this is One Piece and it's Luffy's story, that Luffy will be the king, Law will not be the king. Like, in some way, that has to happen eventually, because they're just, like, equal allies right now. Eventually, someone's going to come out on top, and uh, perhaps now could be that time. I don't know. Uh, but... I, I, I've been moved down based on your argument from like 99 to like 95, 93, 90 or so. I still think he's just going to be a good boy, but uh, but we'll see. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Uh, but I mean, there's 
So okay, so here I, we go. We've got the file. We got. You, oh yeah. You know, I feel comment. like yeah. that the, there could even be a moment where Law is like, he, not in like a in a ridiculous goofy fashion, but like in a yeah. in a Law would be serious and talking about like this is the way pirate life is in the new world. You have to get used to it. You know, get real, kid. Nothing personnel. Um, <laughs> but then he would be completely, you know, uh, completely overturned or like his plan would completely go to shit when Luffy just does something really cool anyway. So he would, That's he would, he certainly would, possible. he would go into it trying to be a villain kind of, but then he would like, it, it wouldn't work. And then everyone would laugh. I'll just, I'll just raise one other reason. I, I find it difficult to believe that like his crew we, like, we don't know most of the crew. They might just be loyal to law. They're obviously loyal to law above all other. But, like, I find it hard to believe that people like uh, Beppo would, like, agree to betray. Law might, but that, uh, like, Beppo I mean, specifically yeah, would agree to betray the That would definitely be something. a thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, Beppo's like, huh, what? No, how could we def... But, you know... Man, I don't know, Law's, man. Law's, not, Law's not, like, a murderer, but he is no. edgy. So I think oh, this he is did it. cut out those pirates' hearts, but they were still alive. He, they he, were, he's uh, edgy. He 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 has the potential to do like an edgy backstabbery thing. For he did the, fuck the up benefit uh, Virgo of himself, that one time. For the benefit of himself and his crew, and mm, mm. Uh, potentially defeating the enemy in a more efficient manner. Yeah, and you know yeah. all that sort of stuff. I think it. I think it could happen. Okay. Well, we'll see, folks. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And here we go. The final, the Shamisen player, which is. Komurasaki, but in a weird non diet Oh, wait, maybe she actually is playing it canonically because she's just in Ringo hanging out. Uh, oh, actually, I was going to say, speaking of Komurasaki, you know how they said, or Hiori, you know how they said that she was safe and all that all that stuff? Um, the fact that our boy Odin, or our boy Orochi here, is saying that he knows uh, the plan here. And, oh, and I, we forgot to say, change of plans, Habu Harbor to Tokage, and he knows that Hiori is still alive and in the north in Ringo, I think there's almost a hundred percent chance that, like, in the middle of the battle, Orochi pulls, like, he has kidnapped her because there's no one there to defend her. Maybe we'll even see a cut. We'll see that the fox tried to defend her because she's alone, as far as we know right now, which is fucking retarded that they left no one with her to protect her. But I'm pretty sure she is, in fact, just alone. Uh, I think she's gonna get captured, and in the middle of the battle, a roach is gonna pull her out as like a trump card gun to her head, and that's gonna be the big emotional moment where, oh my god, I could have totally met you guys in the days and weeks leading up to the battle, we chose not, so this would be more of an emotional impact, we're meeting for the first time in like 20 years, and uh, and then you know, Orochi I'm a slits her throat. Something like that. I don't think she'll die, no one dies in one piece. Lol, white beard, lol, ace. Um, but, uh, I think that's, that's definitely going to be the, the culmination of that. But we'll see. Oda likes to do everything at once in the climax, which I love. But here we go. The skies are bright. The, the Sakura is dancing in the skies. The day of the fire festival is here. The Shogun's procession is proceeding. Shadows of war may alter the very fate of the world. And the war begins! Wano Country, Act 2! Fitty! So here we go. The end of Act 2. Next chapter, presumably, Act 3 begins with the final march. Nah. Tour. It's the day. It's no. the day no, no, of no, the no. battle. Ch no? ne next chapter, intermission. Because the Reverie. last time, yeah, Reverie. last time, we, oh, we might yes! get to see what's happening Come on, baby! D d did that happen uh, last time there was yeah, a... Yeah, last there was time there was like a little oh, fuck yes. mini arc. Oh, mini my God! Moment. I'm so excited for next chapter now. Like... Intermission! Reverie shit! Fuck Wano, man! <laughs> fuck this war! Where's Sabo? I actually care about what Sabo's up to right now. Reverie is... Oh, President Hamburger, uh, King Tacos, um, that sexy, like, uh, Moroccan queen lady. I want to see them all. What are they up to? Oh, my God. Next week is going to be a, a fantastic chapter. I fucking guarantee it. What, what was I the, can't what was fucking the, wait. What was the, uh, the English sort of, like, uh, stereotype king called? I, I could swear there was one. Was there an English remember. You know, there probably was. But, yeah, I mean, next to King like, Tacos, yeah. I mean, come on. Who's going to remember it? Like the Mr. Tea, English tea, man. the tea pose king. Probably uh, Queen Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> something like that, probably. Uh, oh, see, let us know in the comments. I'm, I'm going to go look, actually, immediately after we're done, because I want to see them all. I love all those stereotypical presents. They're so funny and so cool. Everything about Reverie is dope as shit. God damn, I fucking love One Piece. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you, you know, I, I, I just the other, I just recently, I saw some people talking shit online about One Piece. Uh, specifically, they said that One Piece got bad after the time skip. Now, look, I'm totally sympathetic to 
One Piece changed in a massive way after the time skip. But but for real, people, if you just hang in there and and you don't expect... Like, look at me. I'm the guy... My favorite arc is Skypea because it's like the purest form of what One Piece was. And, like an adventure in a new land. It, like we learn about the lore. We learn about like the geography. There's like a mystery that's unraveled. Those elements still exist, but but things have changed. One Piece is about like political machinations, like alliances, yeah. uh, big stuff we've like talked war about trade. A lot before. Stuff the we've way, talked about. A it's, lot. it's a different beast, but I, I mm -hmm. still like this beast. It's a pretty good beast. Exactly. It's not the same. It has changed. And I, I agree. The beginning of uh, After the Time Skip was kind of the slowest part in all of One Piece because it was building up to this big war stuff. But if you hung in there, I really feel like it's paying off. Katakuri, Whole Cake Island, Zo in its entirety, the moment with Raizo, uh, e even some cool moments in, I mean, Fishman Island with uh, Otohime, incredible stuff. Punk Hazard had its moments too, you know, the, the samurai puzzle assembly. Dress Rosa also had some great moments. Bartolomeo. Uh, and now here we are in Wano, the culmination of a million years. And you know what? I'm already feeling pretty satisfied with Wano. I still need my big samurai moment with Zoro. We need the yeah. big Kaido Act fight. Three. It's a Yonko battle. Act Incredible. Three is going to be the clash, the big oh, smash, God. the big bash. It's going to be insane. It's going to be like Super Smash Bros, but like One Piece, you know? Uh, it's incredible. Gonna, I, I can't. They're going to fight. <laughs> <laughs> they sure are. You know, <laughs> there's so many potent, like battles that need need to happen and so many battle, mm -hmm. battles that could happen. Yep. How long is this going to go? I'm really... Oh, my God. I don't know. Like it's two whole years of fighting. I, I, I don't want it to be <laughs> like uh, years and years of fighting, but um, I, could, I could definitely imagine a lot of like brawls where lots of yeah. people are fighting yeah. lots of other people and it's a big mess and somebody has to like... You know, through the brawl, they have to like mm -hmm. fight, like get a, a thing. Like it's it's more about like the the minutia of 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 moving around on Agashima and doing certain mm -hmm. little things while people are trying to fight in every room. I mean, let let's be real. I mean, because we can use we can use something like Dress Rosa as a good example of what this is probably going to look like, um, or or even Whole Cake Island as well. It's going to be like, like there's gonna, there's some characters we need to see fight. And frankly, there's a million characters who are going to be there who we really don't need to see like a cool fight. They just need like their one little moment. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, like uh, Luffy needs to fight Kaido. Zoro needs to fight a samurai and Kaido. Uh, Law needs to show up and do something. Kid needs to show up and do something. Nekomamushi uh, needs to show Nekomamushi. up with the white, white beard pirates and but, do something. But we don't need, like, a battle with those guys. We no, just the, need, like, we just them need the, showing the, up and the, saying... Yeah, the showing up yeah. and, like, the, oh, my God, like, the, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. crash in at the perfect moment or the worst moment. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Um, so we definitely... There's lots of moments that need to happen. Apu but needs I, to I get his comeuppance, this, maybe. Uh, he absolutely does. I cannot wait for that. I want to see a kid versus Apu battle. Imagine big, like, metal man versus, like, weird music oh, dude. You oh, know, that sounds dope. You know, though? Apu versus Brooke. Make it happen, Oh, Oda. that, that would Make be it perfect. happen. That would be perfect. <laughs> um, but I'm thinking... Mm -hmm. When is Chopper going to get his thing? What is Chopper going to do? I've, I've given up. Uh, you know what? I haven't quite given up. I have not quite given up because the numbers were introduced, um, and those guys, I think, might have weird devil fruit things happening with them, potentially. This is, like, real battles have not really happened yet. All the real battles are happening in Act 3 here with the finale battle on, on Onigashima. It's still possible. We learn about uh, fucking everything. All the real juicy stuff, all of it is going to happen here. Like, this is always what happens with these arcs. We get introduced, we learn about the world, but then everything really important happens in the finale. We could learn about Zoans, uh, the, the rumble fruit, or the rumble ball could be important. Chopper could yeah. get some cool moments of being if, a weird, like fighting some numbers or something. It, if, All kinds if of things. If there's like a, t like a priority list, you know, Luffy's always going to be mm -hmm. the main one. I want yep. Zoro to get a good samurai fight, and then I want Chopper to get a good, like an actually good battle I don't want him to, like, solve a problem and cure some illnesses, because he does that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> like, I want him I, to, I mean, to actually be a pirate. I don't think... I per, uh, That, I have given up hope on. I do not expect Chopper to get any kind of, like, real... Remember his fight in Skypea? That was his last real fight, when he fought that guy. I mean, he did a little bit in Thriller Bark. That wasn't... That was, like, a combo fight with Robin. It was okay against Hogback. But that was more of, like, an ideological, like... 
I mean, he was way stronger than Hogback. That wasn't real. But fighting against that one guy, whose name I forget, with the weird underbite or biting his underlip, doing cool... Well, he, ha- he had a fight against um, someone in in, uh, in East Lobby, mm-hmm. didn't he? CP9 oh, guy. I forgot about that. Was You're it, right. It, that it, was his last real who fight. Who was it? it was, they, they, uh, they Kuma, all... Kumatori, I think was his name. Or, uh, no, that weird guy who could change Yo-yo-y. his body shape. Yeah, Yoyoi, that guy, that guy. Um, you're right. That was his last fight. And th- cause that's when we learned about monster point. And once we learned about monster point from every fight then on, it's like, okay, chopper could waste his time using normal attacks or we could cut the bullshit and just get to monster point. I mean, he could and, do a uh, good, like, you know, he could suplex one of the numbers uh, with a monster point. I but mean, it, don't get me wrong. He'll fight for sure. He'll but definitely will he get, fight, but will he get a fight? Like, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I'm skeptical. I'm sc- considering all the things that need to happen in this I, well, I well, mean, that's the, the thing. best like, I hope like, for. Like, Frankie, yeah. would, it'd be mm-hmm. nice if Frankie gets a fight. It'd be nice if Roman... He I mean, won't. everybody who Everybody who was not at Whole Cake, it would be nice if they get a fight, but... I mean, I would love... The most important for me is, of mm-hmm. like, like, not Zoro, not Luffy, is Chopper. If Chopper gets a fight, I'll be completely I satisfy, satisfied I with everything. Yeah, I, I don't need everybody to have a fight. Would I, would I take another Nami fight, a la Miss Doublefinger, or a la Khalifa, back in Andy's Lobby? Ab, I would love it! Do I think it's going to happen? Zero chance. Like, Robin, I would love it. She's had one fight ever, basically. Will she get another one? No, it's not going to happen. Uh, and if it does, I'll be, I'll be ecstatic. I'll, I'll, this is, it'll be pure gravy. But what I need, I, I mean, when we look at the facts, this is what you have to think about. What do you need to happen? We need a Zoro fight. We need a Luffy fight. And I would love a Chopper fight above all the others. Because this is his, like I've said, it's his last chance to be truly relevant to the plot of One Piece. If it doesn't happen now, it's like, sure, he'll get moments here and there. They all will. But it's never going to be like big shonen y Chopper gets to do something really, really cool moment. That, that, it will be past that at that point. So please make it happen, Oda. I'm dying for it. But you know what? I'm, I'm already very happy with how Wano's going. They're having a great time. Lots of cool oh, yeah. characters. So, yeah, just a hope. Just a hope. We'll see. There's tons of stuff that Lo- uh, Oda wants to put in that there's just, like, not oh, enough yeah. time to give a focus to. So we all know that's a, a reality that we have to deal with. And that might just be one of those things. Who knows? Who knows? Okay, well, that's it, people. Act 2 is over. Intermission, hopefully, next time. Reverie next time? Come on. Come on, Oda. Do it. I want to see it. I mean, I, I think can't think of likely. anything in particular that would be more important than Reverie to show right it's now. Number, it's top priority. Number one, by far. I mean, fuck, man. Like, remember all that shit about Eam, who's like the secret final boss? The Meme? actual sitter on the throne? Meme? <laughs> uh, that the fucking Gorosei bound down to? Like, uh, that's fascinating. That's so, uh, Tell me about that, Oda. What, I want to know everything about it. What the fuck is with that giant fucking hat? The straw He's hat. So, that's... I, oh, God, it could, like we said way back then when we talked about that, it could be the worst plot development in all of One Piece, <laughs> or it could be great, and we I just kinda, need to find out what I, it is. I want to know, though. I want to know so bad. Is, uh, is that related to the, um, to the rocks? To the yeah, rocks pirates? We which are relevant? Cause, I mean, the great thing about that is, if that's relevant, which it seemed to be partially, Big Mom and Kaido, who were members, are right here. We have so much opportunity to learn about that from them. Um... What was that fucking crew like? Jesus Christ. Can't wait to find out more. Uh, that's it. That's all we got, Chief. All right. End of chapter. End of arc. Podcast. Not really. End of temporary time. End of podcast. Indeed. Patreon.com slash the podcast pirates. Join our Discord link down below, but give money to the Patreon to be a member of the crew and support the show. $1 and you get a color. More you get cooler colors. $20, you're a commander. Incredible. And uh, follow us on the show. We don't have our own Twitter. Maybe one day. I forgot. Uh, that's it, everybody. Let me know in the comments if we should get our own Twitter. I did, I've been thinking about doing that for a million years. Just never got around to it. I Wouldn't mean, matter. Who cares? I, I, I've, I've always been wondering about, like, if we had a place where people could send fan art, would people even draw fan art? Do you... Do, do people in the in the audience do you draw? Do you like doing that? Do you like uh, drawing us? Hmm? Oh my god! You know what? Um, actually, speaking of fan art, there is something that I should probably have given you before. In fact, you know what? We should we should we should link to this in some capacity at least. Let me just I, I got to take a picture. Hang on, bear with me one second. Look at what I got. This was included in a uh, Weagawa thing, but it's super relevant. And uh, the Weagwa will be out soon. But in the meantime, here's a little preview image. I'm putting this in the podcast 
chat here, and everybody I'm sure will have a link up on. Look what one Nexus Mania made us and Whoa. sent to me in the mail. Is this not the most adorable wanted posters you've ever seen? Look at all the things happening here. You got me. You got a little Michelle in the background. Lol. 100,000 <laughs> subs. Oh, that's so cute. And then hypocrite, red man, give and take. Hashtag hippo wins <laughs> on the right. Oh, it's so cool. Oh, and at the bottom it says, we ran out of space for the reward, so we don't want him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I've got so many aliases. They just, they just they can't keep track. Oh, and look, I think your pirate hat says no on it, a la one uh, punk of note. Nice. This is really That's cool. That's adorable. Nexus, thank you so much. Oh, by the way, he actually, when he sent this, he said, make sure this gets to Gib. How the fuck am I? You live in England. I, I guess I could, like, ship it to you, uh, but that no, seems like a lot of work. Keep, keep it. Keep it on you, and then I will hold like, on to it until the we're next, together. The next time I come over, Radcon or something, when we do uh, the, the podcast live or something at yeah. Radcon, that'll be a great time to, to pass we put it these over. posters I will keep up it on on the wall behind us or something. Oh, they're so cool, man! I look great. I look great in this. Michelle's looking good too. But forget her. By the way, did you notice that like the pose I'm in with Michelle in the background? I feel like is a reference to. Uh, to Usopp being in the background of Luffy's wanted poster. Where he's got his yeah, hand up yeah. and you can just see Usopp. Uh, I, I noticed these things. Damn, I look fucking great in this picture. I love it, and you do too. Uh, <laughs> look at all your strings on the guitar all fucked up. Typical Gib. Yeah. Way to go, Chief. True to life. Oh, I love it. Okay, anyway, thanks for being here, everybody. Thank you, Nexus. And we will see you all next week, hopefully. Doesn't say there won't be, so let's count on it. New chapter. Come on, referee! See you there, everybody. Bye! Bye.